Hello. In this video, I provide a demonstration of how to carry out and interpret a multinomial logistic regression, which is generally used when values on the dependent variable represent unordered categories. A link for the data, as well as this PowerPoint, will be made available for download under the video description. Additionally, a running document containing links to other videos on logistic regression and using other programs will be made available as well. So if you find the, vi the video and materials useful, please take time to like the video and share the link with others. And also please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. So for our example, uh, we are studying predictors of people's voting behavior during the 2016 presidential election. We hypothesize that age, gender identification, economic beliefs, religious beliefs, uh, will predict whether a person voted for Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, and other candidate or did not vote. And just so you know, the other category on the dependent variable was created because of low frequencies associated with the other candidates. So it's not a terribly informative category, but we're just basically using this as another group. So our sample is comprised of 120 observations. Age is measured as self-reported age of the participant. Uh, the uh, economic uh, liberalism variable is rate, uh, basically has individuals rating their beliefs uh, on a scale from one being extremely conservative to seven being extremely liberal. Uh, we have a measure of religious liberalism where participants rated their beliefs on a scale from one being extremely conservative to seven being extremely liberal. We also have gender identification which is coded zero for identified male and one for identified female. So when setting up our analysis, individuals indicating they voted for Hillary Clinton, which is basically those in group one on the vote variable, uh, those individuals are treated as a reference or a baseline category against which all of the other groups are being compared. Just so you know, we could also be using a different reference category if we had uh, an interest in other comparisons between uh, a different baseline category and the remaining groups. So briefly, uh, just a few screenshots and then I'll walk you through the actual uh, steps in SPSS. You'll see that we have, uh, we just simply carry out our analysis by going to Analyze, Regression, Multinomial Logistic. When uh, this box opens up, we move our dependent variable to this box right here. Uh, and we move our um, predictors, our independent variables, to the covariates box. Gender ID is already a binary variable and it's already dummy coded, so it's permissible to include it as a covariate in the analysis. But if we ha happen to have a variable that is a factor variable, uh, then we would be putting it right here in the factor box. Um, also, we would want to make sure that our reference category is correctly uh, specified. So, right now, by default, the last group on that uh, 2016 variable is uh, specified. So uh, that would be the um, uh, that would be the did not vote group. And so we don't want that to be our baseline or reference category. So what we need to do is to click on this button right here. And when we do it, um, we get a little box that opens up right here. And so I'm changing this to first category, which Hillary Clinton was basically coded one on that particular um, variable. Uh, you also have the option for a custom reference category as well. So at any rate, once we've made this change, you can see that now it shows up in our box as first. Now when we click on statistics, a number of defaults show up and I've added uh, this one right here, classification table, goodness of fit. I even added this one right here. But um, so that's basically uh, the, the, the layout for what I've done for this particular demonstration. So let's walk through it using SPSS uh, kind of in real time. So here's our data set and we'll go to analyze regression and uh, we'll go down to multinomial logistic and I'm going to reset this and redo it. So we're going to move vote over to the dependent variable box. We're going to move our uh, independent variables over to the covariates box. Under reference category, I'm going to set this as first because that is the, the value associated with one in this particular case, which is going to be the first uh, category. That is Hillary Clinton. So I'm going to click on continue. Under statistics, I'm going to go ahead and click on classification table and goodness of fit. And I can also ask for information criterion if I want. We'll click on continue and then on OK. And so now we get our output. 
So first off, you get your general uh, information about the model. You can see that we have um, basically these are used to evaluate the overall fit of the model and then we can scroll down and look in the parameter estimates table in order to evaluate uh, the contributions of each of the um, predictors in the model to discriminating between our baseline category and uh, the, the comparison group. Uh, finally down at the bottom you'll see that we get a classification table so rather than me walking through um, the output I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint uh, to give you a little bit more of a, a cleaner walkthrough of the uh, presentation. So let's start off with the model fitting information table. So this contains a likelihood ratio chi-squared test which compares the full model with the, uh, all of the predictors against the null or intercept only model. So statistical significance indicates that the full model represents a significant improvement in fit over the null model. So this is the p-value right here. We see that this is indicating statistical significance. Uh, so in this case we would interpret our model containing the full set of predictors as representing a significant improvement in fit over the null. Next we have the goodness of fit table which contains deviance and Pearson chi-squared tests and basically in this case uh, non-significance is an indicator of good model fit. So you'll see right here that with the Pearson test this is actually significant at the 0.05 level. That would actually indicate uh, poor fit whereas the deviance chi-square test is non-significant that would actually indicate good fit and so sometimes it can be the case where uh, the two test results disagree with each other and that happens to be the case in this particular demonstration. Next we have the pseudo R-square values we've got Cox and Snell, Nagokirke and McFadden's. Um, in general there's not any real strong guidance in literature on how these should be used or interpreted so I would interpret these with caution. Next we have likelihood ratio tests which uh, test the overall contribution of each independent variable to the model. Um, note too that if a variable is added in as a factor the result for that variable is treated as an omnibus test of that factor. So using the conventional alpha at 0.05 threshold we can see that the economic liberalism variable is statistically significant. Age is, uh, you know, I guess you could say it's uh, quote unquote near significant um, as the p-value is 0 0.051. Okay, so these results provide information comparing each voter group against the reference category, that's uh, the Hillary Clinton voters. Specifically, the regression coefficients indicate whether which predictors significantly discriminate between persons who voted for Donald Trump, which uh, in this case would be coded 1 in this particular comparison, uh, against those voting for Clinton, which would be coded 0 for that comparison. Then we have a comparison between the other candidate, uh, that, uh, that group would be coded 1, Hillary Clinton coded 0, and then we have did not vote, that group would be coded 1, Hillary Clinton coded 0. So the first set of coefficients represents comparison again, again between Hillary Clinton voters and those voting for Donald Trump. And as we see within the model, only the economic uh, liberalism variable was statistically significant. And you can see the coefficient is negative, basically indicating that persons who, uh, uh, who scored higher on the economic liberalism uh, measure, basically scoring higher on liberalism, were less likely to vote for Donald Trump than they were for Hillary Clinton. But none of the other uh, predictors in that portion of the model were statistically significant. We do see the odds ratio, that which is given right here, is 0.208, and basically this indicates that for every one unit increase on the economic liberalism variable, the odds of a person voting for Trump change by a factor of 0.208. So in other words, that's um, further confirmation essentially that, um, that as you're scoring higher on economic liberalism, you're less likely to vote for Donald Trump relative to Hillary Clinton. Okay, for the second set of coefficients, we have comparisons between the other candidate and Hillary Clinton. And again, only economic liberalism was a significant predictor in the model. So you can see there's our PVA that's given. Again, the coefficient is negative, indicating that um, individuals who expressed um, that they voted for an, an other candidate uh, basically uh, tended to score higher on 
um, our score lower on economic liberalism. And the odds ratio of 0.446 indicates that for every one unit increase on economic liberalism, the odds of a person voting for other candidate change by a factor of 0.446. So in other words, again, the odds were decreasing uh, with increasing values on the economic liberalism measure. The final set of coefficients represents comparisons between Hillary Clinton voters and those who did not vote. So we see that age was a negative a significant negative predictor in this portion of the model which indicates that persons who are older were more likely to vote for Hillary Clinton than to not vote at all. So the regression coefficients for economic and religious uh, liberalism are consistent with the notion that individuals rating themselves as more economically or religiously liberal were more likely to vote for Clinton than to not vote at all. Nevertheless, these predictors were not significant in the model. Finally, we have our classification statistics that can be used to evaluate uh, how well the model does in predicting group membership. And we see that Hillary Clinton voters were correctly predicted by the model at a rate of 75.8%. Donald Trump voters were correctly predicted by the model at a rate of 82.4%. Persons expressing that they did not vote were correctly predicted uh, at a rate of about 55.9%. Um, but the model does a, a particularly poor job of predicting those who voted for quote unquote other candidate uh, at a rate of 5.3%, which again is not a big surprise because it's just sort of a catch all for all of these other individuals who happen to be in the um, presidential uh, race. Okay, so that uh, concludes our uh, discussion. Uh, on the last page of the PowerPoint, there are references that you can uh, go to and, and read up on some of these uh, topics. And um, in particular, if you want additional information on interpreting those, regress those logistic regression results, you can also click on these two links, and these, are, uh, these will take you to PowerPoints um, on how to interpret binary logistic regression. So that concludes this demonstration and I appreciate you watching.